This is page 9 of the I.O. IO notes, uh, section 3.1, and it is the exception handling mechanism. We've got a text reference, actually two of them, 8.2.3 and 8.6. So this is how does this is about when uh, the interrupt controller receives an interrupt request or a fault or a trap. How does it figure out which um, which handler to run? And the way this works is with um, a technique called vectors. So every exception source is assigned a number or a vector, and then there is a uh, a handler. Um, that is looked up from a table based on the vector number. So every exception source is assigned a vector number, and this would be by the system architect. Um, so for example, when the MCB 1700 is being put together, uh, it would, uh, the system architect would decide that the reset pin is connected to the reset input on the, uh, on the chip, which makes sense obviously. And uh, the, the push button, which you can simulate, uh, you learn how to do that in lab two, is connected to um, general purpose IO port 2 pin 13 knows their decision and then uh, there's a vector associated with that external interrupt it's um, eint3 is the name of it so the vector table is a <coughs> it's an in memory list of handler addresses. And remember, a handler is just a routine that gets run to service an exception. What I'm going to show you, the contents of the vector table are from this file. Startup underscore LPC 17 xx dot s. Uh, so the vector table is often located at starting at address 0, although most pro processors will allow it to be repositioned uh, based on the setting of a pin. Uh, in our case it starts at address 0. And um, this startup lpc 17xx.s, that's one of the, the source files or the system files that gets included for you when you set up your project. Uh, if you look in your project directory, there's a subdirectory called RTE. Uh, beneath that, which would I think stand for the runtime environment, beneath that is devices, beneath that is LPC 1768, and that's where you find this file. And so th the, the table is defined in assembly language by declaring a bunch of values, and it uses the assembler um, pseudo instruction DCD declare data and if you look there you'll, you'll see a bunch of them including the reset handler the NMI handler that I'm going to show you now <clears throat> so what we have is uh, the vector number and then what address um, it contains the address of which handler and this is going to be uh, 13 line table. So I'm just going to estimate here. And I want just a little bit of space to the left and a little bit of space on the right just to add some comments. So vector number 0 is a little unusual with ARM in that uh, there it is not assigned to an interrupt or sorry an exception source. Uh, instead it's used to hold the stack pointer. So when your system starts, it doesn't know where the stack is, and so um, it gets that address from the stack. Um, sorry, from from the vector table from the first entry, and it initializes the stack pointer register with that. Uh, 
So the first really functional vector is vector 1. And the most, I guess, um, important interrupt source or exception source for the LPC 1768 is the reset button. So there is an external pin on that chip and it's the reset pin. When you first power on the board, it will go into power on reset. Or if you press the reset button, which is connected to that pin, in either case, this vector um, or this exception source is generated and the reset handler runs. So this, I'm going to squeeze it in here. I might need two lines. So it runs on startup or reset. And this should sound a little familiar to you. From the end of the C programming section, I described how you get from power on to running your main. And really, the first step is the reset handler runs, and it invokes a bunch of stuff, which eventually invokes your main. Vector number two is the NMI handler. And that's the non-maskable interrupt handler. If you look in this uh, assembly uh, file, you'll see that the body of the NMI handler uh, looks like uh, this. The, the body of this is just B dot. This is assembly language. B is an unconditional branch, and the dot means branch to the same line. So if you think about that, um, there is, uh, I guess, a, an analog in C, which is the infinite loop. Uh, doing nothing. So in it, so something like while one and then the loop body is a semicolon. That would be about equivalent. Uh, so I, I checked it out and on our development board the NMI handler does not appear to be uh, connected um, to, to anything. So this stands for the non maskable interrupt and it can be do, used to do things like uh, to wake up from uh, sleep mode. So you can put your, power, your processor into sleep mode and you can set up the NMI uh, pin to, to wake up the processor if it's, if it's asserted. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to show you selections from, <coughs> from the vector table. Um, so vector 11 is the service handler. So that's the, the software uh, method to invoke um, to invoke a, an OS service. So this is for um, the, the trap that we talked about before. It's an OS service call. And that's all I'm going to show from uh, the top of the table. And these, so vectors 1 to 15 are have internal sources. So they are either for faults, there's also there's a memory fault, there's a bus fault. So they are for faults or uh, for trap instructions. So those are the internal sources I mentioned before. Starting at vector 16 and higher, these are for interrupt sources. And so all of the handlers end in IRQ handler. And the first one is the watchdog timer, WDT. IRQ handler. And a watchdog timer is used in any kind of embedded system that has to operate autonomously uh, and it's a way to recover if it gets into um, I guess a, an undefined or, or a bad state. So the timer uh, repeatedly counts down with some given period. If it manages to count down to zero it resets the system. Um, so your application has to periodically reset that watchdog timer to avoid it counting down to zero. So it's kind of a system health monitor. So this is the watchdog timer. And uh, again, if you check out the, uh, the startup LPC 17xx assembly file, this is also set up as an infinite loop. So most of these handlers are, 
not set up to do anything useful. If you want to develop the system further, then you can add code to them. The reset handler is set up though. Okay, uh, vector 17 is for timer zero. I think that's uh, self-evident or descriptive enough. Vector 21 is for UART0. And vector 37 is for external interrupt 3. So on the LPC 1768, there are four pins that are set up to accept um, accept inputs from directly from uh, like a push button or some other kind of source like that. So there are the external interrupt sources and this one is um, EN3 which is connected to the push button. So in lab 2 you learn about how to uh, set up the peripheral sim simulation uh, there's the joystick, but there's also a push button, and you can do button up or button down. I think those are the two inputs that you can select, and they um, they would cause this handler to run if you have set it up to do that, and so on. So that's just a small selection. So these uh, exception sources are external to the processor. So they're basically IRQs. And I believe they go up to vector 63 um, with, with the LPC 1768. Uh, this is, the, the size of the vector table is configurable for Cortex M3 processors, but in the 1768, I believe it's 64 entries total.